your hot and techy breath up the city bird SUV. 36 for 3 with Jesswell, Butler and Samson back in the hut. We were wondering if he'd make an early appearance here on ESPN Ticket for Timeout, but Riyan Parag has played a blinder. He showed signs of maturity in the season opener for Rajasthan Royals. He's played his best knock in the IPL by far. More runs today than he had through all of last season. And he's taken Rajasthan to 185 for 5 against Delhi Capitals in Jaipur. On Maruti Suzuki Arena, presents ESPN Trick for Timeout, joined by Tom Moody, Vaseem Jafar and Rana Kapoor to look back at that first innings where the score predictor winner is Vaseem Jafar, who's won. He's going to win a lot more. He's going to win a lot more than just the score predictor today. Mm. What a, what a, what that one day's rest, Incredible. remarkable what it can do. Mm. But that one day is enough for me. <laughs> I hope you don't know what we're doing with you for the next week or so. Mm. Okay, you're giving you a full <laughs> week off only. But is that true what you said? That this is more runs from Parag? Se 78 runs in 7 innings that he batted last season. And wow. now 84 not out today to follow up on the 43 he scored in the first game, Tom. And uh, remarkable turnaround. Certainly is. And, you know, over the last few years, we've been quite critical of uh, Ram Parag. And I think it's important that, you know, we... By we, you mean? I think collectively the whole, oh. the whole, you know, media fraternity. Mm -hmm. You know, not just this platform, every platform. Yep. Um, and I think you know it's important we celebrate when someone's Absolutely. turned turned the corner. And, and you know, we saw signs of it in the first game, and we certainly saw the best of it today. And that was a very mature innings. Just the way he structured his innings. I thought was absolutely bang on. They were under pressure early. They lost key wickets early. I think they only got 32 in the power play, so they were behind the game, but under pressure. On a surface that wasn't easy with the new ball, but he sat in the game and he was only going at a runner ball for some time. And then he you know, found his feet and found a partnership and uh, showed us exactly what he's capable of doing once he's at the crease. So well played, young man. That was brilliant. Mm. It was good enough in that season opener, you, but you could argue that he had Sanju Samson going well and Rajasthan were going steady. But to do it from this situation, uh, how much of it is just the approach and how much do you also see, do you see anything technically changing with Parag? I think this number suits him more than anything. It gives him time. Uh, he's used to batting at this number. Uh, like I said, uh, for the Assam, he bats at number four, gets a lot of opportunities, uh, you know, time to build his innings. He is not a, a typical number six or seven batter where he can go from get go. Uh, so I feel, you know, Rajasthan have found the right spot and he looks uh, very determined. Uh, he looks much fitter compared to last season. Uh, and I'm happy for him because he got a lot of flack, uh, you know, for last yeah. two, three seasons. Uh, and he's making most of these opportunities. Yeah, I that think that, that's, the, that's the story, isn't it, for Parag. Parag is the, is the story of success in a social media age of the IPL for a young player who is expected to perform as well as players vastly more experienced in age or, or matches. And when he doesn't, the franchise is ridiculed, his social media is under the scanner. And what that can do to someone who's that young, you know, often it could have the complete opposite effect. Parag is 22, yeah. right? His T20 debut in domestic cricket was 2017, seven years ago. So when he debuted, he was a, he was, he was a kid. He's literally a kid. And then you go through the rigmarole of the IPL where it became almost a point to make fun of oh, what is the obsession with Rajasthan Royals and Rayan Parag. Well, this is, this is it. And we talk about franchises at times being criticized for long-term investment in players. It doesn't work. IPL is a short-term success story. Prithvi Shaw, we speak of for Delhi and how franchises will be disappointed. They retained him and didn't. You know, and they can't find a place for him now. They don't want to, they don't see him in the 11. But Parag, you have to give it to the Royals. They get a lot of things which we may sometimes think wrong, but they've clearly got something right with Parag. I don't know if you think this is full credit to the franchise or just a player will only mature when he has to. And this season, like Wasim says, terrific domestic season for Assam, batted at the right position, captain. If that has helped us see the best of Parag, no matter where he would have been, or whether this is something the franchise can really be proud of sitting today. I think, I think we have uh, too high expectations on a lot of young players yeah, at yeah. times. Um, and some young players don't help themselves in this modern day um, age with social media, how they get themselves out there. So they put themselves 
in line for criticism instead of just sitting back and just doing the work and, and letting their scoreboard mm. do the talking. Um, so I think there's lessons to be learnt there over the last few years for, for, for a lot of players in that situation. Um, did Roger Stone get it right? It's been a long wait. Yes. It's been a long wait and, you know, there's been, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, errors along the way with regards to, you know, his, his selection um, that we've been critical about over, over time. But uh, if he's going to continue to bat like this, mm. uh, they've got a, a player that they're looking to retain yeah. uh, going into the mega auction next year. You could flip it the other way around also when Vaseem says this is his number. Clearly, we've not known Ryan Parag's number all these years in, 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 in the IPL because the Royals last year wanted to keep him as a pure 6-7 okay. ball finisher, right? So, that's yeah. less than a year back. But, it, but, but every, every player wants to bat 1, 2, 3 and 4 yeah. in T20 cricket. The hardest place to bat is 5, 6 and 7. Mm. And it's, it's, it's a tall ask to ask a, a, you know, a very young player without experience to, to walk into bat mm. and weave your magic when you've got five balls. Mm. And it's purely because the kind of numbers he had in domestic cricket, mm. they kind of understood that he batted at number four and did what he did. I mean, Assam, you know, Ronak, uh, yeah. they, they never get into the knockouts. Yeah. And they purely got in because of his standout Absolutely. performance. Mm. So, you know, they could see that, you know, this prop, we could try him at this number. But and he's, in, he's an outspoken guy. I mean, mm. you can see in his Twitter and, and handles, he said some outrageous I, thing. Yeah, he's the new age player, right? So that's why this success story is unique. It's different and it's. I'm glad it's happened and Tom's right. He, who's to say he's not amongst your four players that you'd want to retain now with age on his side mm. and if he has a bumper season, let's hope he doesn't fall off. But there's every reason to believe that he will. Yeah. So, well done, Riyan Parag. 84 not out of 45, setting Rajasthan up to that total of 185. But there's something interesting Rajasthan did. They changed tactics mm -hmm. after losing the top three and that's uh, what we focus on, on why they did that. Tom, R. Ashwin being sent at number five, what was the reasoning behind that? It's clearly worked for them, but why did that happen? I think they do it to make their batting look longer. Mm. Um, as simple as that. They, they were in, in trouble, three down early, lost three key players. Uh, Ashwin's certainly no mug with the bat. He's capable, um, but it's a tactic that uh, Rajasthan have used before. And it allows them to push the likes of Hetmeyer where they want Hetmeyer to bat, and that's the last five overs. Uh, I think this evening he came in with three overs to go. Uh, but they don't want to expose Hetmeyer around that 10th over mark. They feel that's a little bit too early entry point for him. So, you know, Ashwin is going to be more effective at that point of the game than sort of asking him to come in at the 18th over or the yeah. 17th over. Mm. Yeah, it also, we, we've seen this before, right? Yeah. And it... The, today is a great example of it actually working the way Rajasthan wanted to because between Ashwin and Jurel, that's 49 of 30. So that's a 30 ball 50. The, when, it, when they take up too many balls, then you're asking yourself if Hetmaya had 30 balls, he'd probably get you a 50. And last few seasons when Ashwin's come in, he started with a bang in the power play and then he struggles to keep the tempo going outside the power play. Eventually, he gets a score of say 50 or 40 or so. Yeah. And I remember that game. I think it was against Delhi itself, mm. where they ended up losing the game. It, so maybe it's just a Delhi thing. <laughs> RR sent Ashwin to bat but, up. Ahead but it is him. a pattern because Ashwin has now batted 23 innings yeah. for Rajasthan, and 10 of those have been in the top six, eight in the top five. Yeah. So they do use him a little but, more. I must say this was the most impressive Ashwin T20 innings for a lot of reasons. The short hitting, the six hitting of Nokia. Yeah. That was a full <laughs> shot. Or quite something. something. Yeah. Mm. Maybe he's also at a different space, but. I don't know if this is something that will continue, Tom, whether, because they sent Jurel ahead of Hetmeyer as well. So, I don't know if and that is something that surprised us more than Ashwin, because we've seen that from Rajasthan before. Mm. But Hetmeyer's got seven balls. Would you be saying that's maximized your batting resources? Well, Jurel, you know, he, he went at nearly two runs a ball, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. He'd strike rate of 200. 20 of 12, yeah, yeah 166. Yeah, close to it. Um, yeah, I was surprised Hetmeyer didn't go at that point, mm. purely because of the left-right hand option um, and Axel Patel was bowling yep. as well and that's the, your ideal matchup with a left-hander. Uh, but, you know, who's to, to question the yeah. tactics? They've, this, they've posted Parag, 185 yeah. and they've, got, is, it, yeah, they've got it right. And yeah. this also potentially saved Rajasthan from perhaps having to rethink their impact because if you lose another main batter, if you lose a Jurel or a Hetmeyer if they go in early, 
you would perhaps have to consider Robman Powell coming in at the expense of that additional six bowler you could bring in later? At, at this stage, they don't even need to name Hetmeyer in their 11. <laughs> if they plan on just giving him five or mm. these two bat a little more, then you can, you can play around with that even more. But yeah, in all seriousness, the test will be when some team gets Rajasthan four or five down within the 12th. 13th over. Yeah, plus, I want to see them bowl first and see what their, yeah, yeah. What their yeah. 11 is. Then, are you willing to take the field without Nandre Berger? And, you know, that's then. Gonna, that's going to be the interesting yeah. one. That's why the toss was interesting. Yeah. Let's focus yeah. on the Delhi bowling now, shall we? And uh, begin with Andrik Nokia, whose return. Uh, those figures don't read well, 1 for 48, but some exceptional shot making from Ashwin. And then Rian Parag launching into him in the final over. Assessments, Basim, on Nokia's return? I think he bowled well. Uh, you know, that was exceptional uh, from Ashwin and, and the last over. Other than that, I thought he bowled well. He, mm. he wasn't, uh, obviously, he must be rusty, uh, which is expected, but I thought uh, he was okay. Uh, what speeds did he clock? Did he clock? He wasn't, he wasn't at his usual sort of touching 150. Um, mm. So he'll build up into that, I'd say. Yeah. And the rest of the Delhi bowling, Khalil, Khalil started quite yeah. well. Uh, he got some tap in his last over. If not for that, these would have been exceptional figures for him as well. Uh, I think Khalil, Irfan made the point when he was with us the other day, that Khalil is not so far away from a surprise call-up as we may think. Because there are players that India have played in T20I cricket in the last 12 to 18 months and you think it's between that pool of players that the selection will come. But given that the World Cup is right after the IPL, given that there wasn't a lot of T20I cricket and a lot of players weren't fit. Selectors have been pretty clear that this IPL will be decisive in the squad they pick. And if you are determined to take a left-arm fast bowler there, that narrows the pool down. So you've got Arshdeep, and then you've got Khalil, Natarajan's and, uh, and Mohsin, Mohsin Khan. Yeah. So, but out of those, three players haven't featured for India and they were not supposed to be part of the plan. Yeah. But the timing of the IPL come, is very interesting and Khalil, if anything, has... If I have to compare them with those four, more boxes covered when he's fully sort of in form with pace between yeah. the four that I named. Ashdeep is still young and it'll be an interesting season for him. But Khalil, serious bowler when he bowls like this. Yeah, if he gets it right, he, he was he was touching 140 plus today. Yeah. And his first three overs were nine for one. So he bowled, you know, really well. And if he gets it right, he's got variation. He can bowl over around the stump. Yeah. Can swing the ball as well. Was he in your pick as well? Was he one of your picks? No, no. Okay. Thank God he wasn't. Yeah. Just the way you're talking about it, I thought he might have been in your, <laughs> yeah, in your so, picks. But yeah, look, I'm a huge <laughs> fan of Khalil. I, but the, the, the one box that he hasn't ticked is his his um, ability to bowl at the back end of the innings, mm. and that that would be something that the Indian selectors will be looking at. I'm sure. Yeah. Yes, with a new ball, absolutely. He's got a great wrist position, swings it both ways. But can he bowl? Can they rely on? Because ideally, a specialist bowler, you want at least one in that back three or four overs. There's also the fitness point, of course. He can't be impact subbed off in the World Cup, which he has <laughs> mm. after 15, 14 overs today. Yeah. And we have seen Khalil is someone you, with due respect, sometimes have to manage in the field. So yeah. there's that aspect too. Let's quickly get a tracker on how those outrageous picks that our panel made uh, worked out for them. Uh, Tom is still in play, of course, because his was Marsh hitting four or more sixes. Let's see if that happens. Jaswal to score a ton, uh, he fell a bit short. Uh, that's one of the rare ones you've got wrong today. And Kuldeep Yadav to go at less than four runs per over uh, didn't necessarily work out. He has conceded 41, which that, is the yeah. most he has in more than a season in the end. There's a four in there. For, should have gone for Aksa. You, that's a typo. I said 14 and over. He will <laughs> concede less than 14 <laughs> runs per over. And uh, uh, I what think did Aksar go for? What did Aksar go for? 5.25. That's not the typo, though, sir. I <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, before I get uh, some calls from you guys for the chase, uh, Rian Parag playing such a good knock at number four has got even one of the best number fours in the world talking. Surya Kumar Yadav, even as he makes his recovery and Mumbai Indians wait on his fitness, has put out this tweet after watching Parag saying, Medagai at NC a few weeks ago came with a slight niggle, completely focused on his recovery and with great discipline working on his skills. And I was not wrong to tell that to one of the coaches there. He is a changed guy. Rian Parag 2.0, watch out. Yeah. It's about as high as praise comes for his batting at number four. 100%. I, I was actually surprised that he wasn't picked for Indian team in, in those bilateral series because the kind of performances he put in. But I won't be surprised after the IPL or probably after the World Cup because the World Cup is straight away after the IPL. 
might have some spots yeah, opening up. Definitely. So you see him playing for India within the next year? Yeah. Is that your outrageous prediction or your bold prediction? That's a bold one. Yeah. I like it. I like it. If it bats like that, yeah. it's pretty special. There's yeah. also every chance that whatever the effects of the World Cup, there will be some vacancies in the Indian team. You know, yeah. with, I don't see Rohit and Virat wanting or looking to play another T20 World Cup. But then I said the, we said the same thing after so the So you're last saying World they're Cup. retiring? You're announcing that? <laughs> that is my outrageous uh, prediction. Not that they, that they may not find the motivation to play another. If they do, they will certainly be good enough and the team would be blessed to have them. <laughs> you could join the PR team. You've wriggled out of that one nicely. <laughs> yeah. no, yeah. All right. Quick thoughts. Uh, 185. Which way do we see this contest uh, finishing? Tom. Oh, I think it's Rajasthan. Yeah, it's, you know, that, that, that sort of finish. The last five hours, they got 77 runs, which I think has closed the door on DC. Mm. So yeah, I would say RR as well. Unless Warner and Mitchell, uh, sorry, Mitch Marsh does something special. Do I see you making a bold call? The thing here is that they're actually a better light uh, today. I mean, they're going to get Porel in, but if they played Shea Hope and they saw that that's what they need in their top order, yeah, you can't, you can't, I want to make an outrageous call, but <laughs> it's not, not let's me. Not the right day. <laughs> yeah. But let me still make something out of it. I think Pant will get a score, a proper score. He's going to get 65. Does enjoy batting against Rajasthan. Yeah. Remember some so blazing. Pants to get 65, but unfortunately Delhi to fall short. Right. We will leave it at that. I think Robin Powell is on just as a fielder. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Burger's Monday already Burger has been impact uh, subbed in. Hetma is chilling after seven balls. <laughs> yeah, he's Tiring down. workout for him. We leave it at that. Uh, that does it from us at halftime. Be sure to join us at the end of the game. Keep sending in your questions in the post-match show. Uh, we will put those questions across to our panel here. Download the SPN Trick and 4 mobile app if you haven't already. It will have you covered on everything from this game and everything else that's happening around the world in cricket. That's all from us. Uh, be sure to join us after the end of Rajasthan versus Delhi on Maruti Suzuki Arena presents the SPN Trick and 4 timeout. All new hot and techy breath up the city bird SUV.